Hello everyone and welcome to our very first Virtual Housing Day event 2021. We thank you for taking the time to join us today to find out about your housing options for next year. My name is Bianca and I'm the Welfare Advisor representing the Students' Union Advice Centre. This presentation is titled Successful House Hunting and the aim of this presentation is to offer you information to make good housing choices for your next academic year. A bad decision may cause you to have a challenging year next year. The key messages that we want to take away from this presentation is for you to not panic, that you consider all the options available to you to make the informed decision about housing next year, and if in doubt, encourage you to seek advice. We will also offer important insight onto the impact COVID has had on students renting in the private sector and your options in the event of a national lockdown. The copy of this presentation will be made available to you online after the event. So let's look at what makes house hunting successful. You need to be checking that the property you move into is in the right location, with the people you want to share with, and that is affordable for all. Firstly, we encourage that you do not make a rush decision, so please don't panic. Making the right decision is very important. A good housing choice can make the difference between a successful year and a very difficult one. If you have any questions or are not sure what the right thing is for you, make sure that you get advice. If you have a disability which may affect your ability to live off campus, talk to Wellbeing Support Services, the disability or mental health teams, or if you're just not sure, the advice team is here to help. Planning is vital, so it is important that you take time to plan ahead. You want to consider who you're going to share with. Getting along with your housemates is very important. You want to think about how many people you wish to share with and how do you go about setting house rules, such as cleaning the communal areas. Consider if you're a tidy or a messy kind of person and what happens if you fall out with a housemate. Location is equally important. Majority of students live within the surrounding areas of the university, such as Lamington Spa, Coventry areas such as Canley, Tile Hill, Earlsdon and City Centre, and also Kenilworth. When thinking of location, think about the transport links and the time needed to get to and from university, and consider that in rush hour it may take longer than expected. Have a think about the type of property you want to live in. If you want to live alone in a one bedroom studio flat or in a purpose built private halls or a small three to five bedroomed house or a larger group of five to 14. Consider your budget. Can the whole group afford the same rent? And depending on your location, you may pay more. For example, Leamington generally is more expensive than Coventry. From our experience, we understand that not everything goes to plan when renting. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact us at the Advice Centre. We're here to help. Look for the best value. Our research indicates that larger properties work out more expensive per person than smaller properties. An example, an eight bedroom property in Leamington Spa costs around 12% more per person per week than a four bedroom property. There are more four, five and six bedroom properties than larger ones. And some of the larger properties are more expensive and also not of good standard. You could consider splitting the group and getting two smaller properties. Choosing a private landlord or agent. All landlords are expected to meet a legal standard that ensures the property is habitable. Please make sure that you understand what these legal obligations are. There are a wide range of providers and properties to choose from and a wide range of styles, conditions and cost. We advise that you seek a recommendation where possible from a former student or tenant and that you view the property if you can before you sign the contract. The Advice Centre has a lot of information on our web pages to help you understand what your rights and responsibilities are, so please take time to read through our publications and visit the help and support pages on the website. So you find a property, what are your next steps? Make sure that you read all the information about the property, verify the landlord or agent's details, check the affordability, look at the energy performance certificate, arrange a viewing where possible, check who will be managing the property and whether or not you need a guarantor. Make sure that you read all of the information. It's very important that you understand what is being offered and what is included. The EPC, or energy performance certificate, after April the 1st, 2018, 
all properties must reach a minimum rating of E to be rented out. A being the most efficient to G and is valid for up to 10 years. The ratings and the information about the property's energy use and typical costs. The recommendations about how to reduce energy and to save money. There are some very limited expectations to the rules requiring landlords and agents to provide one. But in general, the rule is going to be that all properties students are looking at are likely to have an EPC. When viewing a property, feel free to use our checklist in the guide and download from the link provided. Always check to see who will be managing the property because this is the person who you'll be contacting should there be anything going wrong. This could be your landlord or your agent. Also check whether or not a guarantor is needed. Some landlords and agents do require a UK-based guarantor to be able to guarantee the rent. Understanding the costs before paying anything. Consider how you will pay your rent, whether it be monthly or quarterly instalments. Or if you don't have a guarantor, you may be expected to pay six months or more in advance. Before you sign a tenancy agreement, make sure you understand how much the rent is, when and how often it needs to be paid, what fees and charges you have to pay before you move in, on renewal and at the end of the tenancy. If your fees will be refunded if you and your landlord decides not to go ahead, what length of tenancy agreement is on offer, if you and your landlord can end the tenancy early using a break clause. The only legitimate fees an agent can charge are rent in advance, tenancy deposit and a refundable holding deposit. So before you sign the contract, what needs to be paid and when? Understanding your contract or tenancy agreement. Most contracts are called assured shorthold tenancies. This is the most common type of agreement used by agents and landlords and are typically a minimum of six months in length and after that period expires a landlord can evict you without reason. Make sure that you read and understand your contract. Whether you're signing a single or joint tenancy, know that once you've signed the contract it is legally binding. If you are a sole tenant, you are the only person responsible to meet the obligations under that contract. If you are signing a joint tenancy, you are all equally and jointly responsible to meet the obligations of the contract. The contract sets out the terms of the tenancy. For most students, these are going to be 10 to 12 months in length and there is usually no break clause. This means you are not permitted to leave the contract early and you are required to pay the rental payments as agreed in the contract till the end. Some contracts may allow you to find a replacement tenant should you wish to leave the prem premises early. If you have any questions, please contact the SEO Advice Centre. What happens after signing the contract? You should receive the government's How to Rent Guide. Below we've given you a link should you wish to have a look at this before signing your contract. You should receive your energy performance certificate. As stated before, all properties must reach a minimum rating of E to be rented out. Your deposit protection certificate should be given to you within 30 days of you paying your deposit. For more information, please check the link below. The gas safety certificate is a legal requirement and there must be a valid certificate for the property. It is usually given to you on the day that you move in. We recommend that you check the property again before your moving in date. As most students sign a contract long ahead of their actual start date, we re recommend that you visit the property again to check that it is still in the agreed condition and that no work needs to be done. If you decide that a few things does need to be done, talk to the landlord or agent and try to get them to do them before you move in. Things to look for when you view a shared property. On this slide you will see examples of the gas and electrical safety certificates. Also, a notice displayed in the prominent position in the common parts detailing the name, address and any contact telephone number for the manager of the property, as any more than five tenants will need to be licensed. Other things to look for when looking at a shared property. The final exit doors and bedroom doors should have a thumb turn lock, not keys. Smoke detectors should be at least in the hall and landing and a heat detector in the kitchen. Bigger properties may need more, and you should also have a fire blanket in the kitchen. So what problems may you have after signing or moving in? When you move into a property, we advise that you take photographs and videos time stamped of every room, fixture and fittings, including the walls, 
the mattresses and the floors, as this may assist you with any future deposit disputes. Take an inventory of everything and the condition, as this will be evidence in the end. We we'll receive inquiries from students who experience problems after signing up or moving in. And some of these include disputes with housemates, landlords or neighbours, breaches in contracts such as noise pollution, usually neighbours complaining about noise or vice versa, disrepair as such as the house not being habitable condition, some environmental health issues or problems with central heating and water, and finally, the deposits or non-return of them and the legal implications. If you experience any of these problems, please go to our website for more information or contact the advice team by completing an online inquiry form. And finally, last but not least, the last 10 months have been incredibly challenging for everyone. We've all had to adapt quickly to the changes imposed on us due to COVID-19. The new rules, social restrictions, remote working, online teaching and digital environment, just to name a few. What I can say with some degree of confidence is that the future eight months from now is impossible to predict. What life will be like in the new academic year is anybody's guess. But what have we learned from our housing advice experience? We believe it's important to share with you that once you sign that tenancy agreement, it is a legally binding contract. You are liable to pay the rent for the duration of that contract. This means that you have to pay the rent even if you're unable to live in the property, even in a national lockdown. Most contracts don't have a break clause. This means that you have no right to surrender that contract. This is a discretionary option which you can try to negotiate. So what are your options? Your first one is to try to negotiate a mutual surrender of the tenancy. This is unlikely with very few landlords and agents doing this, but it's always worth a try. Try to negotiate a reduced rental payment in the event of another lockdown and get it written down in the contract before you sign. You have the most power before you sign the contract and if the landlord refuses, you can make an informed choice as to whether or not you wish to sign. Agents and landlords can apply pressure for you to sign. We would advise that you push back from this and make sure that you understand your obligations before you sign and where possible, negotiate in your best interests. In the event of having to find a replacement tenant, you can always advise on our website on the Housemates Wanted Forum. We'd like to wish you the best of luck when house hunting. We hope that when the new academic year starts, we're all in a much better place to navigate life. Thank you again for watching and listening. We will now take live questions and allocate a few minutes for the following topics. House hunting, contracts, problems after signing and lockdown implications. If we are unable to answer your question today, we will provide answers to all questions that are later date and make them available on our website. Good luck and thanks again for listening.